I played 50 games of Rainbow Spell Mage, and this is everything that I've learned. Early on, one of the things that I learned about this deck is that it is not actually an OTK deck. Yes, you can do some really big combos with the Sif. You can hit for 25, 28, 30 damage, maybe even more if you're able to set it up. But that's not really the main goal of the deck, and that's not how you're going to win most of your games. In fact, if you're trying to play this strictly as an OTK deck, you're likely going to be losing games that you could otherwise win. The correct way to play this deck is actually as a tempo deck, developing the board as we're playing our different spell schools and making our overall deck stronger by playing those different spell schools. As a result, the best card in the deck is actually Cosmic Keyboard. You're going to want to keep this in the mulligan in every single matchup. It's just so good to be able to play this early in the game and then be able to generate minions as you're playing some of these spells. Things like Cold Case to be able to get a couple of 2-2s and a 4-4 from the keyboard, as well as the one copy of Sar Power that's in the deck to be able to clear your opponent's board and put a 5-5 in play. Also keep in mind that this deck has a lot of Discover. Speaking of Discover, when we discover cards, there's some very important things that you're going to want to keep in mind. Every Discover is going to be different based on the matchup and the state of the game. Keep in mind, though, you're always going to want to try to discover a spell from a spell school that you haven't cast yet, simply because the more spell schools you've used in an individual game, the stronger our board sweep gets in the form of Inquisitive Creation, the stronger our Sith potential gets in the form of Extra Spell Power, and the more minions we'll be able to summon off of the elemental inspiration. It's also important to note here that we don't really want to save these small spells. Again, we're not trying to set up for the big Sif combo. So if, for example, you have a Flame Geyser in your hand on turn one, it's perfectly acceptable to just go ahead and shoot this into your opponent's face. It's going to play a fire spell, and it's going to give us the opportunity to increase the strength of our spell school-specific cards. Again, we're not trying to save it. That card could sit in your hand all game long, doing absolutely nothing, and actually making your deck weaker. Keeping in mind also that the more spell schools you've played, the cheaper the card draw is going to be in the form of the Wisdom of Norganon. And so we really just want to play those spells, Flame Geyser, and even the Arcane Bolt that comes off of Arcane Worm. You're going to want to go ahead and play it early, because increasing the power of the spell school-specific cards, like Inquisitive Creation, can be insanely strong. On a similar note, when it comes to Molten Rune, you don't always have to forge this card. If forging is a little bit better than a hero power, you certainly can. But again, we don't necessarily want to save this Molten Rune for some type of a Sif combo. You can actually just play it, get the one or two random spells into your hand, because again, they could be from a spell school that you haven't yet played this game, and your overall deck is going to be stronger and more cohesive the more different spell schools that you play. Reverberations, a very, very strong and key card in the deck. You can do so many cool things with this. It can be used as removal for your opponent, their titan, or just a big minion that you're a little bit afraid of. Or you can also actually just create a copy of your own Sif for the additional spell power, or potentially just to be able to get an extra copy or extra two copies of Norganon with that Reverberations. The card is extremely flexible. It has a lot of different uses. When it's in your hand, make sure that you don't waste it, but carefully consider all of the different things that you could potentially do with that card. Lady Nazjar actually just offering the deck with a little bit of utility. You can see here, I would say very rarely do you use it as removal, but it is an option if you're up against a scary minion that needs to come off the board like a titan. The gain armor, this can be really good, of course, if you're low on health, if you're afraid of dying, play this after a frost spell, you can gain a little bit of armor. That offers some extra healing there. And then, of course, if you're trying to set up for uh, some type of a Sif combo, or sometimes you just have a lot of spells in your hand, and if you can reduce the cost of all those spells, allowing us to play more cards in a turn, that can also be very strong. This card is going to have different uses in different games and different matchups. You're likely going to have to play with it a little bit to find out what's best in every different situation, but the utility that it offers the deck is actually pretty powerful. Elemental Inspiration, this deck, I've actually included two copies. I really like the card. Certain classes, certain matchups really have a hard time with a board full of four fives, and they can actually just lose to it. And then, of course, if you also have the Cosmic Keyboard equipped, this is also going to summon a 7-7 seven, seven when you play this. Again, it's like a board in a box. Sometimes you can find taunts. Sometimes you can find uh, lifesteal minions or rush minions to be able to impact the game immediately. I just like the card. I find it to be very strong, and it fits in extremely well with the theme of the deck. We're likely going to be buffing this as we play throughout the course of the game, so that by the time you get to turn 7, you're already going to be summoning 3, 4, in some cases, 
five of these four fives with the bonus effect. Now, one of the things that you're going to notice here is Solid Alibi is not a part of the deck. This card was recently nerfed. I actually played all 50 games with this exact list. I never played Solid Alibi. There are some situations where it could still be good. The nerf to three mana isn't that bad. But it just wasn't good enough, I felt, to actually be included in the deck. Although keeping in mind that you can potentially discover it if you need it off of something like the Prismatic Elemental. Speaking of defensive cards, Arcane Artificer offers a lot of healing when you need it. Potentially you can save this card to be able to get a lot of armor early in the game. And potentially a special shout out in the Shaman matchup. Almost all Shaman right now are playing the OTK version. You can actually just play this out on turn one, and the Shaman either has to choose to use a Lightning Bolt on your minion, which means that's a Lightning Bolt that's not going face later, or you're going to get to be able to play some spells and gain armor in the early game. Even if you can just pick up like an extra 6, 8, 10 armor before they're finally able to remove this card, it can go a long way to prevent them from being able to OTK you in a single turn. In other matchups, it has the same amount of value. You can play this out on the board, play some spells with it to be able to gain armor. Overall, very solid card, really in every matchup, offering that chance to be able to heal. Another special note on the Norganon here, uh, in certain matchups, you can play this card and it could potentially just win the matchup if you can play it on an empty board. Certain classes actually just can't remove it. Uh, certainly Hunter comes to mind as a class that may struggle to remove this particular card. And being able to play it out, cause your enemy's cards to be able to cost one more, Again, just being able to slow them down, it's going to give a greater chance that the Norganon is going to stick. And then the second time around, you could potentially look at dealing 10 damage, as this will be buffed, or you can Reverberations and deal 10 damage twice. Just offers a lot of good utility in certain matchups. In the Shaman OTK matchup, you can actually just play it right after your opponent plays Flash of Lightning. That's going to prevent them from being able to get the OTK in a lot of cases. And then they're going to have to choose, are they going to allow you to get a second use off of the Norganon, or are they even going to put a little bit of their burn into it? It definitely make things awkward for those OTK Shamans. You do have to be careful with this card in certain matchups against Mage and against Warlock specifically. The card is not going to be that good. You should probably never play it specifically because of reverberations. Being able to use the Norganon against you is something that your opponent is really, really going to look to do in those particular matchups. Speaking of the matchups, you can see here the results of the 50 games that I played. It took me almost seven hours to be able to log these games. And then you can see the individual results from the matchups here. I do want to talk about each individual matchup because I feel like I've been able to glean a little bit of wisdom as to how they're played and how you can expect that matchup to go. Death Knight was actually the most popular class that I played, and I ended up hitting a small pocket of Blood Death Knights. So you can see here, I went 50% win rate against Death Knight. Largely, the Blood Death Knight matchup proved to be significantly harder. Things like Dirty Rat pulling the Sif out of your hand can be particularly bad, as well as Patchwork potentially just destroying your Sif. And because of Blood Death Knight's ability to be able to heal and to be able to go significantly above even 35 health with the Renathal version, you really have to look for Sif uh, to be able to kill that particular deck. And if they remove your Sif option, then uh, it's going to be really, really hard to be able to win the game. So Death Knight, Blood Death Knight, definitely a harder matchup. Plague Death Knight, I feel like the Plague Death Knight actually just dies. There's a lot of games where they do nothing but shuffle plagues in your deck. You draw a couple of them, and uh, it's just not enough to be able to disrupt the game plan. So against uh, Plague Death Knight, your better option is probably going to be a tempo-based option. That's going to be with uh, Cosmic Keyboard, and uh, along with playing spells like Cold Case to be able to develop that board, get that chip damage in, and then you could potentially finish them off with the Sif. You know, something like a modest 10 to 15 damage is usually enough, and sometimes they actually die before that. Just keep in mind, against Plague Death Knight, they are going to have the Hardcore Cultist, which is 2 AoE, and the Tomb Trader for 3 AoE, as well as they're going to have the Chained Guardians, the 8-5 with Rush and Reborn to be able to remove minions. But outside of that, potentially you can do a lot of damage with the minions, and they just tend to fold up in my experience. I actually only faced two Demon Hunters. One was a Spell Demon Hunter, and one was a Relic Demon Hunter. Spell Demon Hunter really wasn't all that bad. Being able to gain lots of armor with the Arcane Artificer seemed to help quite a bit. They struggle to be able to find lethal, and you can just continue to pressure them, keeping in mind that in most cases, Demon Hunters are going to struggle with minions that have more than three health. So again, with the Cosmic Keyboard, if you're able to get down some big minions, or if with your discovers, you can discover something like Arcane Defenders to help protect your face, untargetable, and big minions that can punch your opponent. Soften them up, and then again, potentially a Sif coming down, 10 to 15 damage to be able to close out the game. Not really all that hard with this deck to do that. And again, you don't have to save these early spells in the game to be able to do that. You want to play those because, again, if you never play those spells, then your Sif isn't going to grow in spell damage. So overall, uh, Demon Hunter, I think it really comes down to Relic. 
being a bit harder matchup. At some point, their board is just too big, and you're not going to be able to handle it. You're going to take a lot of damage from those big minions. Spell Demon Hunter, I think, is actually favored for this particular mage deck. 100% win rate against Druid. Every single one of these matchups felt good. I played against Ramp, as well as, like, a Treant aggro deck. And in every case, it just felt like we were favored against the aggro deck. Inquisitive Creation can just clear their board as you're developing a 3-4, and they tend to run out of cards, so if you can sustain against their first wave, clear them off the board with the Inquisitive Creation, they're not going to be able to get back on board, they're not going to be able to buff their board, and it's just an easy win from there. A Cosmic Keyboard can potentially be good in that particular matchup, but at there's times when it is just a little bit slow, just being able to remove those minions turn after turn is going to be your best option in that matchup. Against Ramp Druid, you definitely want the Cosmic Keyboard early, being able to develop the board with some early minions to punch face and soften up your opponent could be good. And sometimes on a bad draw, the ramp druid is actually just going to die to that minion pressure. Eight games again against Hunter, one of the more popular decks that I saw on the ladder. What I found is that I felt favored against Big Beast Hunter and I felt favored against Aggro Hunter. Those matchups weren't that bad. Arcane Artificer offers the uh, ability for us to be able to heal quite a bit. Inquisitive Creation can help us push them off the board. And then at some point, those decks just tend to run out of cards. The Problem Hunter deck is the Arcane Hunter deck. They draw so many cards. They have the 6-2 bows. They have the Titan that's coming down. And uh, again, it's just like a 5 attack weapon that's going to be punching you in the face, potentially drawing cards as well. Arcane Hunter proved to be a tough matchup just because they get on the board early. You take them off the board, and then they're playing these big weapons, continuously being able to punch in the face. That felt like a harder matchup. But against the other Hunter matchups, stay the course, try to take as little damage as possible, clear them off the board with Inquis Inquisitive Creation or something like the one copy of Star Power that's included in the deck. And then you should just be fine from there to be able to finish off your opponent either with minions, Hunter particularly, particularly struggles with the Elemental Inspiration minions, or even a little bit of a Sif damage combo to close out that game. Actually, zero Paladins on the ladder, quite depressing for Uther. Uh, three Priests, I felt favored against every different version of Priest that I faced. I think I faced Automaton Priest as well as Control Priest. And what I found is that Automaton Priest is actually just a meme deck, don't worry about that. But Control Priest, again, if you can get down the early keyboard and get some minions to be able to get some chip damage into your opponent, it goes a long way to being able to set up for a Sif combo just a little bit later in the game. And especially with like Cosmic Keyboard and Cold Case, the 4-4 minion is going to survive, even if your opponent is going to have an early copy of Clean the Scene. You can push that 4 damage into the opponent's face. Elemental Inspiration also proved pretty good in that matchup. Things like Light Bomb aren't going to touch it. It's just not enough to be able to remove the four fives. Clean the scene unless it's infused won't remove them. So if you can get this down before your opponent's able to get to the Whirlpool, then all your four fives should be able to connect with face, and the priest just continues to take damage until they die. Against Rogue, three Rogues, three Mech Rogues. Unfortunately, Rogue uh, in the Mech version is just too strong for this deck. They're able to stick a mech, they're able to magnetize to it, and they're able to start going face. Things like Stealth and Divine Shield are going to make it really hard for us to be able to address those early game minions. Sometimes you can get a reverberation to be able to remove the first big minion, but then they follow it up with more big minions and you just kind of tend to lose. We are definitely unfavored against Mech Rogue in this particular matchup. Eight games against Shaman. These were all against OTK Shaman. You can see here, I came in at 7-1. and one. That's an 88% win rate. What I found is that a lot of people are not very good at this deck at the ranks that I'm playing at. Likely going to be the same with the ranks that you're playing at. So you really just don't have to be afraid of this deck at those lower ranks. It's an insanely hard deck to play. And chances are people are not going to be playing it well. A well-timed Norganon coming down after your opponent has played Flash of Lightning can buy you the time. You make their cards more expensive, and then they're stuck having to fish for their second copy of the Flash of Lightning or creating an extra version of Flash of Lightning with Lightning Reflexes. That can buy you the time that you need to be able to finish off your opponent. And then sometimes it's just a race. Typically, you can get down minions in the early game. They're going to be able to do chip damage into your opponent's face. And then you can look to finish them off with a small Sif combo. 10, 12, 15 damage, right around the time they really want to be comboing you. So again, Norganon, I would honestly likely keep this in the mulligan if I was confident that I was going to be playing against an OTK Shaman. Again, just because being able to make their cards more expensive. The OTK Shaman deck definitely telegraphs when it's going to go for the kill, and this gives you some counterplay to that. Uh, you could also try to discover like a solid alibi and again just play that after the opponent has played Flash of Lightning. Extremely unlikely that they're going to be able to kill you without that mana discount. Six games against Warlock 50-50. Uh, the matchup was really interesting. Warlock potentially has some extremely high rolls that you actually just can't overcome. 
and then potentially they just do nothing and die. So the Warlock can actually lose to early pressure created by the Cosmic Keyboard, and sometimes the game goes long enough that you're able to kill them with a Sif. Typically the Warlock is going to be damaging themselves by tapping and potentially playing things like Hellfire. They're going to get a little bit low, and then you're able to finish them off. And then sometimes they just absolutely draw dead and do nothing. Keep in mind here, you don't ever want to play Norganon against the Warlock. Uh, it's actually just kind of bad because they also have access to Reverberations. But also keep in mind, you can use your Reverberations on some of their big minions if they happen to get out of Thaddeus or if they're able to get down their copy of Sargeras. You can remove that so that they don't get the additional plays off of that Titan found the matchup to be not that bad as long as you can avoid the high rolls. Only one matchup against Warrior. I think this was a Blackrock and Roll Warrior. They were able to get the Blackrock down early. They were able to get Lorthamar down early. And it came to a point that they were developing so much armor that I actually just couldn't kill them. And then after the Odin came down, I was just a couple of hits away from being dead. So not quite sure exactly how that matchup is going to go. If they're unable to get their uh, big minions off of the Lorthamar and or the Blackrock and Roll, then I feel like it should be pretty good. Um, it's likely you can develop a board and get some early pressure to start to pressure their health, keep chipping their armor down, chip their health down, and then finish them off with uh, some type of a Sif combo. It shouldn't be all that bad. It really depends on whether or not they draw those insanely powerful cards. But Warrior likely not going to be a deck that you're going to be seeing very much out on the ladder. And I, I saved the best for last here. Mage the Mirror. Every single mage that I played was Rainbow Mage. I took on that mirror six times. You can see I came out 50-50. I find the mirror to be extremely interesting because people are playing different versions of this deck. Some people are playing Stolid Alibi, which I wasn't. Some people are not playing Elemental Inspiration, and I think even some people are currently not playing Norganon. Largely, the deck is the same. It's going to be a Spell School deck that's going to be playing lots of different Spell Schools to be able to buff the Inquisitive Creation. I think every version of the deck is likely running Sif. So a lot of times, people are going to be trying to set up these OTK combos. You can fight against that by trying to develop as much armor as possible off of the Arcane Artificer, and maybe a well-timed Discover on a solid alibi of your own. Overall, the mulligan for this deck, I would always keep Arcane Worm in every single matchup. I am keeping Cosmic Keyboard every matchup. Same to Prismatic Elemental. And I will take a note here, do not keep Infinitize. The Maxitude is actually just a little bit too slow. We don't want this. We want to go for something that's going to develop the board a little bit more than this. Although later on, it can be good to start to try to discover spell schools that haven't been cast yet. And then I think I also like to keep Cold Case. Uh, it's just really good, really, really good with the Cosmic Keyboard, but a little bit of healing. The two twos are going to be good, and that's pretty much going to be the mulligan for most matchups. If you're expecting a board-based matchup, it's fine to keep Inquisitive Creation. Sometimes that early board clear can be very, very strong. And again, against Shaman specifically, I would be keeping Norganon. That is everything that I've learned after 50 games of playing this deck. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget the like button, and also potentially consider the subscribe button. I'm Uncorrupt, and good luck out on the ladder.